Welcome into press coverage. Dan Hope joined by Andy Anders just uh, hours after Ohio State men's basketball's Big Ten tournament run came to an end. And certainly a valiant effort for the Buckeyes, but one that came up a bit short as Ohio State lost 77-74 to uh, to Illinois, uh, a game that Ohio State really needed to win to have a shot to make the NCAA tournament, which means likely uh, if the Buckeyes continue to play this season, it will be in the NIT. But I don't think the way the season ended should overshadow the effort that Jake Diebler did to turn this season around. Because you think of when we jumped on here a month ago to talk about Chris Holtman being fired on Valentine's Day. I mean, it, it, it was almost like, why even bother with this? Because it felt like the season was a lost cause. And Gene Smith said he thought Jake Stiebler could give this Ohio State men's basketball team a spark. And that's exactly what he did. Yeah, I mean, it was a month ago to the day from when Ohio State started the Big Ten tournament on Thursday that uh, Chris Holtman was fired. And at that point, you know, it felt like I, I I don't think this is certainly what we expected out of this team to to go on a run winning six or seven games under Diebler to get a bye in the Big Ten tournament to enter into the NCAA tournament conversation in all likelihood will not make the NCAA tournament. I mean, uh, the, the talk going into this was that two wins was going to be the requirement, um, and that was before I think they got some unfavorable bubble results over the last few days, so... Um, really, really not much of a shot to be in the NCAA tournament, but even for this team to do what it did, getting that first round by in the Big Ten tourney, winning a game, they were competitive with Illinois all throughout that game. I mean, you can't, there were a lot of very even statistical numbers. I think the biggest discrepancy was in foul calls. And, you know, I'm not one to sit here and, and talk about, you know, blame the refs, do this, do that. Um, 27 to 13, though, in terms of fouls called on Illinois versus fouls called on Ohio State was, I think, the deciding factor in that game in a game that, you know, a lot of people, I don't think, um, if, if you say, yeah, that's going to be the main reason Ohio State loses and they're only going to lose by three points a month ago. That's, it's just another result of, you know, looking at this team's stark turnaround under Jake Diebler and seeing what they've accomplished and why he is now getting consideration to be the full-time head coach. Uh, this is, uh, you know, it, it's just been a, a very fun one to cover from a journalistic perspective. And I know a lot of fans have been excited to finally have some juice, have something to care about when it comes to this team and, and have something to cheer for over this past month. It's kind of refreshing to to see fans complaining about the refs rather than the coach, isn't it? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, you think, you know, for so long it was, you know, after every time Ohio State lost, it was fire Holtman, fire Holtman. I know you would see the comments on your stories and it was a lot of fire Holtman. And in hindsight, probably rightfully so. I mean, it was it was clear that Jake Diebler got something different out of this Ohio State men's basketball team that Chris Holtman was not. And so you got to give a lot of credit to Diebler for that. Now the big question, like you said, is will that be enough for Jake Diebler to get the head coaching job at Ohio State? And it seems like this is going to come down to either Dusty May or or Jake Diebler. You know, we had said, you know, a few weeks ago, we were hearing Sean Miller was the front runner. It feels like Sean Miller's kind of faded out of the conversation at this point. Uh, Nate Oates, who we had mentioned on Real Pod Wednesdays earlier this week, had uh, gotten some consideration. He just signed an extension in Alabama, so he's out of the picture. And we have Greg McDermott signed an extension. Lamont Paris signed an extension. Uh, you know, Chris Gent's name has been floated around there, but I don't really think he's all that serious a candidate. I think at this point, it becomes a question of, do we ride with Jake Diebler, or do we go with a more proven candidate in Dusty May? And I think you can make a valid argument either way here. I mean, I think the way that Jake Diebler not only galvanized the team, but galvanized the fan base and boosters and former players around him, I think you can certainly make a valid argument for keeping Jake Diebler as the permanent head coach at this point. I think the question is, does it truly make sense to promote Jake Diebler if you can get a guy like Dusty May, if we assume that Dusty May would take the job, which is not a given because 
it, it's been reported that Louisville is interested in Dusty May as well. So Dusty May is a guy that is going to have multiple choices of where he could potentially go be a head coach if he wants to make that jump up to the high major level. But that tells you right there, you know, the kind of candidate he is. I mean, he is the guy we identified from the start as someone we thought would be a good fit for this position. And I think the, the, the thing that Dusty May has that Jake Diebler doesn't is Dusty May has proven that he can build a program year round. Jake Diebler has shown that he can coach the team really well and that he can get the most out of a team that needed some extra juice. But there's a difference between coaching a team for one month and actually building a program year round, maintaining a program year round, you know, recruiting and roster retention and fundraising and all the different things that go into being a head coach. Jake Diebler doesn't have much experience of that yet, but even this past month as the head coach, you know, he's just been focused on coaching. He hasn't had to focus a whole lot on all that other stuff because he doesn't even know if he's going to be the head coach next year yet. And so it's a different role. And I think if you're Ross Bjork now, and I think we both expect a decision on this is probably going to come pretty soon here now, because now that Ohio state's NSA tournament hopes are seemingly over the transfer portal opens on Monday. And so it's important for Ohio state to have a plan here. They may not necessarily, if they do decide dusty may, they may not necessarily be able to announce a hire right away because dusty may is, uh, on a team that is going to go to the NCAA tournament in Florida Atlantic. So that could potentially de delay the process. I think if you were going to promote Diebler, you would do that very soon. And so I'm sure Ross Bjork in consultation with Gene Smith and, and anyone else who's involved in this decision, I'm, I'm sure he's in that decision mode right now on, you know, whether to stick with Jake Diebler or whether to go for Dusty May. And it's going to be very interesting to see which way he decides to go here. The other thing that plays into Jake's favor over, and, and this is something that's, I think, an argument that's increased over the last month is roster retention. Um, because, and, and not to say that Dusty can't keep some of these guys. Dusty's, you know, he's got a re reputation as a player's coach too. Not to say he couldn't keep some of Ohio State's pieces around, but Jake Diebler recruited a lot of these players that are on Ohio State's roster right now. You're guaranteed to lose Jamison Battle. He's out of eligibility, but uh, everyone else... You know, I, I think a month ago, you asked people whether or not they care about retaining the roster. I think a lot of people would have said, no, this program, program needs a full reset, bring in new pieces, bring in a lot of people from the transfer portal. Um, now I think you're in a position where the, the way the team has played this last month over Jake Diebler, they've shown that there was always a certain depth of talent here. I always thought that this team had a lot of pieces, especially like just going – down the depth chart in terms of the depth that Jake started rolling in as the season progressed. Devin Royal getting more minutes, guys like that. Um, and, and those are all young pieces. I, I think you'd like to keep these freshman and sophomore classes intact as much as you can now because there's already – good pieces here to operate with between Bruce Thornton, Roddy Gale Jr., Felix Akpara, Scotty Middleton, Devin Royal, those kinds of guys. Um, so I think that's another argument that has sort of increased in Jake's favor over the last month when you're comparing these two guys. Uh, now, again, administrators aren't going to be swayed as heavily by the emotions of a run like this, and nor should they be, um, as fans are, because, you know, it, it's like you said, Dan, over the whole season, getting results like this on a year-in, year-out basis, as opposed to one galvanized stretch run after your coach gets fired, is a different thing. And uh, not to say that Jake isn't totally capable of that, not to say Jake's not going to be a great head coach, but Dusty's shown he can do it. Uh, and, and you have that track record, you have that proof, not only reaching the final four with Florida Atlantic last year, but following it up with another great season this year. Um, and, you know, I, I think that side of it is where you might defer to Dusty. Uh, but I, I think there are, Jake has certainly made a case for himself uh, the last month, as we've said, with the results he's produced. And then I think, with that roster retention side. And, you know, he is 
he was the lead recruiter for Holtman for a lot of these guys. And so those number eight classes that they strung together, he had a lot to do with that. So I, I think from a recruiting aspect, I'm not sure there's a lot of separation between these two because Dusty's still got to show that he can do that at a high major level too. Jake's still got to show that he can do it as a head coach. So uh, recruiting is kind of balanced in my eyes between these two. And when you look at program building, Dusty's got that in his favor, roster retention, that in Jake's favor. A lot of arguments going both ways here, Dan, a lot, uh, two very different directions you can take yeah as we sit here today i would predict that dusty may will be ohio state's next head coach i think he will take the job if he is offered it and i do still believe that he is the guy most likely to get the job but i will not be shocked if ohio state ends up going with jake d I, i think there has been real momentum there over the last couple of weeks toward Jake Diebler getting real consideration from this job from Ross York. And I think one way or another, Jake Diebler is going to be a head coach somewhere next year. And I think he's going to do a good job. I think he has shown that he has what it takes to be a head coach. I think he's a guy that clearly players are going to want to play for. And, and I think, you know, he has a, a, a confidence and, and a style about him that I think is going to allow him to have great success wherever he ends up. And so, you know, we will see how that ultimately plays out. Basketball season, not necessarily over yet. Uh, you know, credit to uh, Bucknut Steve Hellwagon, who uh, talked to a lot of players uh, on Friday night in uh, the locker room after the game and asked them about the NIT. And it sounded like most of the players would want to play in the NIT. I know Jake Diebler said, you know, if if we play there, there's a championship to go win. So I would think based on what we've seen from this team over the past month, you know, if they get offered an NIT bid, which you would certainly expect they will, you would think they would take it and you would think they're going to go play hard in it. It's, it's certainly not the NCAA tournament. It's certainly not uh, something that, you know, is going to get people as excited as an NCAA tournament berth would, but you know, to your point of, you know, some of a young talent that's developing, you know, you hope to be able to keep this roster intact. You think of guys like Devin Royal and Scotty Middleton who have been, you know, building some momentum. I think the NIT could be a positive thing for those guys to continue to get some experience going into next season. Absolutely, you know, and uh, I, I think it would be a good idea for Ohio State to play this NIT. Um they, uh, I, I think it would be good for them to, even the guys that seemed hesitant, um, because there were a few people that, you know, no, I don't, no one openly spoke out against that I saw an NIT birth in Ohio State's locker room among people that were asked um, post game there. But, um, you know, there were some people that said, you know, stayed pretty mum about it, but said it'll be a team decision. We'll come back and discuss. You know, I, I think there were a few players that maybe you could tell weren't completely sold on the idea. But I think even if you're talking about a guy like Jameson Battle, who's a senior, who's um, not going to – he doesn't have a reason to develop for next year. He's done. Um, why not give it another shot with your, you know, with, with your teammates that you've been there with all season, you know, you, you only get one college basketball career. And, um, I, I think for Jameson, even, and it, he, it might be a nice high note to go out on if you could make a nice NIT tournament run. And uh, I, I know, you know, it's, it, the joke is of course, you're going to be playing for 69th place in the country, but, um, there's still a point of pride anytime you get to take the court as a co- as an athlete or as a college basketball player. And, uh, you know, I, I think there's a lot to gain for Ohio State in terms of those young pieces developing, like you said, for, for next season. Um, and in just ter- in terms of program momentum, you know, and to put a better con- – write a better conclusion to this story, this great turnaround that you've had under Jake Diebler since your head coach got fired – than losing to Illinois in the Big Ten tournament and having that be that. I think a, a run in the NIT is a, is a little better chapter to write than um, than that as as the final send off for this team. Yeah, and it's worth noting too that you know all those players being asked about that they were being asked minutes after a heartbreaking loss that yeah yeah basically crushed their NCAA tournament hopes and so you know you know emotion it, it, you know it. If I was sitting in their shoes, I'd probably be, I don't know, I haven't thought about the NIT. You've just been thinking about trying to get to the NCAA tournament. So, you know, we'll kind of see where their heads are at 
on Sunday when maybe that becomes more of a reality. Uh, you know, NSA tournament selection show scheduled for 6 p.m. NIT selection show scheduled for 9.30 p.m. So by the end of Sunday night, we will know what is next for Ohio State basketball on the court. Uh, we'll see pretty soon if we know what's next for Ohio State basketball in terms of who will be coaching the team next season. Uh, plenty more to follow there, too. You got, again, transfer portal opening up. Uh, it, it, it's going to be a busy offseason. Anytime you have a coaching change, you can count on a busy offseason. And so uh, we will be covering it all at 11 Warriors. We hope you keep up with us over there. And we'll catch you next time on the next episode of Press Coverage.